essentially just butt forward, kind of like a, a, a ram just running horns into another ram. This is happening in a lot of Jake fights. You guys have seen this, uh, uh, you know, clash of heads. Sometimes Jake does lead with his head into some of these, you know, clinch exchanges. And right here, he's doing it behind a high guard. This is not a, you know, it looks goofy and you wouldn't coach this necessarily, but if you want to get past all the fluff and get past that kind of mid range to get to close range and you don't have an attack to do it or you're caught in between combinations, again, you don't see a lot of openings here. It may be to the body, which, you know, Mike does have that lead hook to the body and bang, that lead uppercut. So that could be dangerous, but you, you see Jake just, you know, working that inside range, how to get there if he doesn't have a combination or if he's throwing his combination and he's stuck. We can throw that high guard up, pressure Mike forward and make him hold that weight while also protecting ourselves. Then throw our combinations, bang, left hook, and then finish off with the double jab. Now, I really like this stuff. I wish I could rewind, but we're on Instagram. Yeah. I really like Jake's one too. Here. It looks a lot more clean, a lot more crisp. And again, he looks lighter on his feet. Now, again, there's a lot of tell behind it, right? He picks up that lead foot and really stamps it down, but it looks far cleaner. It looks far more precise. And it looks honestly so much less force than I've seen from Jake uh, in a Shit, while. And even bad, in the Mike Perry fight, I thought there were exchanges. In my bad. I wasn't even paying attention. Too many beers today. What's up? Hi. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm doing fine. Hi, Danny. Enjoy your day. I'm off. Have a good one, Miller. Sorry, guys. I wasn't paying no fucking attention. I totally forgot that I even had the live on. <laughs> My bad. My bad, guys. In there that Jake looked a lot more labored in. It looked a lot more forced. His feet were a lot more flat. If I'm going to play the game, I got to freaking... Bring the other phone over here. Put the other phone in front of me so I can see that the chat is possibly going. I totally missed two people, three people coming on. All right. I got messenger on this one. Nope, probably not. Fucking do that every damn time. Right. Well, I got two options to see the chat so that I don't screw up again and not pay attention. He didn't have the movement he had versus Anderson or versus Nate Diaz. And you can attribute that to short camp. You can attribute it to Mike Perry being an awkward style. You can attribute it to Jake having to cut from 230 to get back down to 200 when he was bulking for Mike. Here, he doesn't look as like he looked pretty big, like not in shape big when he was bulking for Mike Tyson. He was like 230 pounds of just jacked up, but it wasn't like muscle. It was just fluff. Here, he looks a lot more slim while also maintaining muscle, which allows him to bang, bang, throw these punches without a ton of effort, but still have some sting on him. So all in all, like I said, this, this mitt work while Jake, and you can see kind of here at the end, he does look still a little bit hefty. He does look lighter on his feet and he gets stuck right there for a little bit. And those are the moments where Mike can definitely capitalize where Jake gets kind of stuck and freezes a bit. Like even here, kind of just, okay. Double high guard, just you hold that. Those are things that Mike can capitalize onto the body, but Jake's going to be here and he's not afraid to throw these combinations. Bang, bang. And this is what I really liked here. Boom. The way he shoots the right hand and it's not, you know, forced. It's not overthrown. And it's from that pocket. It's almost like a gun holster just zoom, right through. And also he's keeping that lead hand high.